Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus Dominion painting tutorial and today we are painting the killer boss with his faithful Stabgrot, best friend in the whole wide world. Well, we can't really assume their relationship, but it's definitely friendly. I mean, look at him. They're such good friends. Anyway, we're going to be painting them both in the same video and, well, without further ado, we're just going to get started. They've been primed in grey sear and the first place we're going to work on is all of the skin. Now I'm going to put the stab crop to one side for now, however, we are going to be doing the same things on him at the same time as the kill boss. So if I'm doing the skin on him, I'm doing it on him. If there's anything unique on him, I will demonstrate it, but we'll give you some updates as we go along. So the first colour we're going to use when we're doing our flesh is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Militarum Green and Creed Camo. And all we're going to do is just going to load this paint up on the brush, I'm just going to pick a place to start. Now I'm going to start, I think, just around here on his neck. And we're just going to start painting this all over the skin, like so. Now just be careful with how much you have on your brush, because if you have too much, it might get a little bit out of control. It might come out as a little too dark, and that's not the type of thing we're after. After just a nice smooth coat here, you don't want it to be too splotchy. So just try and stick to the tip of your brush, like I'm doing here. And just mop up any excess should it arise for example just in there got a little bit too much and you just want to use these very delicate brush strokes like this just moving that paint around staining that gray sear model this color rather than just attacking it to get that lovely smooth finish like this So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh and we're going to apply this all over that skin. And once again, just want to be careful with how much paint we've got on our brush here, because it can get away from you. But this is just going to add that little bit of warmth in there that we really want over the top of our one-to-one -one mix of Militarum Green and Creed Camo. As you can see, it just adds that kind of unhealthy but sort of warmer green pallor to the to the skin. So as I say, we're just going to go all over like this. And then once that's dry, we'll come back. So with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on from all of that skin. Uh, we're going to do the highlights a little bit later. So we're going to now focus on his clothes. And the colour that we're going to be make, making is a roughly two parts wildwood to one part gore grunter fur. And similarly, again, we're just going to load up our brush here. And we're just going to start painting it all over all of his clothes. So what we want to do is kind of his poncho and his skirt. For lack of a better word, I do not know the terms. And one thing to point out about this back piece it does come up here around his neck like so. so just want to go around like this and then we'll come back so with that done what we're now going to do is going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of wildwood and black templar and we're going to use this on all of the strings but not the ones that are hanging from him. So like this kind of tassel here and here and here, all these ones along the bottom of the shield. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focusing things like the wrap around his leg, around here with this color, like that. And areas like this kind of cross, cross of ropes around his chest, areas like that. We just want to go all over these with this color. Just being careful around all that flesh now. Of course, we've got the belt just under there, as you can see. And we're going to do this on all over as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our red details. The reason we're doing this now is because, well, we've got some metallics that we need to do, but we want to get the shields to the right colour 
So we do these highlights first because we've got a glaze that we're going to do over them, over the highlights and over the rest of the shield to really just kind of elevate that colour and tie the whole thing together. But it gets very difficult when you've got all the metallics involved. So we're doing this Fire Dragon right now to save us some hurt later on. So we're just going to pick out all of the hard edges in the shield. And there are quite a few of them on this one. But I'm sure you can tell. By looking at yours. So you just want to go around like this with the Fire Dragon Bright. And then once it's done, we'll come back. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part flesh terrors red mix. I'm going to paint this all over the top of all of those red details. Now I've added that fire dragon bright to these tassels as well. And if you're happy with how they look like that, you can just leave them. However, we definitely want to do this on the shield and you can see why in just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small amount of this on our brush. Not very much. We want to be very careful with how we're applying this. We don't want to do loads at once because it can get out of hand. So we just want to very, very carefully apply this and just watch for any really dark pools. However, because it's nice and thin and it's going over the top of that Fire Dragon Bright and that Blood Angel's Red, it's just going to pull all of those colours together and give us a really lovely, vibrant red for the shields. Just like this. So with that done, your Killer Boss and Stab Grot should be looking somewhat like this. So, the next colour we're going to use is Pterodon Turquoise. And we're going to be using this on these tassels on the shield. So we just want to take some of this on our brush, just like that. Just paint this all over these little areas just like this. And don't forget about the one on the Grotch shield. And also, on this guy, there's one up here as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and use this to paint in the handle of his axe. So with that done, what we can now do is work on the metallics. And the first colour we're going to be using is Iron Warriors. And we're going to be using this on all of the silver details. Now, he is majority silver. However, he does some, have some kind of brassy panels. So what I would do is I would recommend checking out the product photography to figure out where to place them. But we're going to be starting up here on the axe blade. Like this. And I don't know if I've said it, but with the colour we're using is Iron Warriors. Generally a good idea to say that. Usually do. I'm gonna do all of this area with the thinned down iron warriors. Like that, just ignoring the kind of I guess you'd call it a decorative feature, but I mean <laughs> it's not particularly decorative. Uh, we're also gonna be doing his kind of knee and his shin and his foot armor. We're going to be doing these kind of hip plates that he's got. We're going to be doing his shoulder guard on this side, around here. We're also going to be planting the majority of the helmet, like that. We've got this plate here on the back. 
that we're going to be doing it on. And on the kind of this kind of crotch area, what we want to do is we want to paint the scaled plates at the bottom. So this one, this one, and this one with this color, as well as the spikes in the middle up here, like that. And then we've got the teeth and the spikes on the shield as well. On the stab crop, it's pretty much going to be all of his armor and of course his stabbing knife. We also want to pick out these little kind of studs and things on the face of the shield all around here and on there as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Rune Lord brass. We're going to use this to paint in our remaining metallic areas. So we've got areas like this spike down here, like that with the rune or brass. We've got this kind of area going around here and over those nails as well. We've got this plate down here, We've got the spikes and we want to do this kind of cross piece here as well with the Rune Lord brass like that and then we've also got the eyes on the shield and we've got this shoulder plate here as well there isn't actually any Rune Lord brass on this guy at all he's all silver he's not good enough to have any decoration <laughs> you just want to go around like this and then we'll come back and with that done, we've got just one last base coat to apply and this is going to be a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood. And we're going to apply this on the little pouch on his belt. Just like that. So with that done, you should have a killer boss with stab grot that looks something like this, which is looking pretty awesome. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some shades. And the first color we're gonna be using is Basilicarnum Gray. And we're gonna be using this over the top of all of our silver details. So all of our iron warriors. We just wanna be very careful with how much we have on our brush. If we have too much, we will basically end up with a black metal, which is fine, but we still want it to have at least a, a few silver properties. So just use smaller amounts than you think you normally would. And just kind of stick to the tip of the brush. Just move around that excess if you've got it. And just go around like this, picking out all of these details. So with that done, the stab grot is all nice and shaded. So we're gonna put it into one side and we're gonna now add our last shade, which is gonna be Fire Slayer Flesh. We're gonna do this over the top of all of our Rune Lord brass. Just like this. And so with that done, our killer boss and his faithful stab crop are at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. They're looking pretty awesome. However, what we are gonna do is we're gonna take them to the very next level and we're gonna add some highlights. So starting way right back at the beginning, we're gonna be doing the flesh first and the color we're gonna be using is some thinned down or green camo. Now all we wanna do is we wanna take this thinned down or green camo and we just want to start picking out all of the most prominent features and edges on all of their skin. 
We'll do the same thing on the stab crop. Just like I'm doing here. There is like the rib, his neck that I've just done. Like this. So we round the muscles on his arms and so on and so forth. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some pterodon turquoise, just a small amount. I'm going to use this to colour in his eyeballs and his bottom eyelid. Just like that. And with that pterodon turquoise applied, we then want to take a teeny tiny dot of Evil Sun Scarlet. We want to apply this to the eyeball itself. Like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to paint in his clothes. Well, we're going to highlight his clothes. And the colour that we're going to be using is Steel Legion Drab. And what we're just going to do is very similarly to the skin, we're just going to pick out all of those edges. Just like this. And so with that Steel Legion Drab applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thins down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our black and all of our darkened strings and things. So we're just going to pick out the strands. Like so, and similarly up here. We want to pick out the grain of the wood. So with that Dawnstone applied, what we now want to do is we want to take some thinned down cyberite green. We want to use this to highlight our turquoise tassels. And with that done, it's now time to move on to highlighting the metallics. And the place we're gonna start is on all the silver. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Iron Hand Steel. And all we wanna do, much like we've been doing so far, is just wanna start picking out all those edges. Just like this. And with that done, you should have some pretty awesome looking metals. However, I'm gonna show you one little extra technique just to make those weapons look even better. And as you can see, I've already done it on the killer boss's axe. We're having lots of tiny little diagonal lines to make that kind of cutting edge look sharp without making it look nice and clean. So what we're gonna do is gonna demonstrate this on the stamp crop because he's a little bit harder to do it on and well, Got to show you the harder techniques sometimes on the harder models. So we're still with iron hand steel. What we do is we take a small amount on our brush, kind of like that amount. Then what we do is we just very carefully pick a place to start. And I'm going to start down here. And we just start adding lots and lots of very small diagonal lines. 
like this along the cutting edge of the blade. Now you don't have to be perfectly spaced. The idea is, is that you kind of mostly just cover that whole area, just leaving a little bit of the previous bottom area a bit underneath it shining through. So that way it doesn't look like it's like a completely clean, smooth, not sharp edge, but it definitely, when you kind of put it under the light, it catches off it. It just makes it look that much more, that, that bit more sharp. And then finally, just to complete that effect, what we do is we take some Stormhost Silver and we use this along the cutting edge. So just as a highlight, like that. Just make it look even sharper, like so. And so with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take a teeny tiny amount of Fire Slayer Flesh what we want to do is just like this is going to add a little bit of rust and dirt to those weapons so what we want to do just like kind of here in this kind of pitted area just add a little bit of this fire slayer flash like that and like that and we can add some in the blade as well Just like this, just very subtly adding that kind of rusty dirt into it. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Sycorax bronze. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our Rune Lord brassy areas. Just like this. So with those highlights applied, our killer boss with stab grot, well, they're pretty much finished. There's only one thing left to do, and this is entirely optional, but we've done it on the rest of them and it's quite effective. So what we're gonna do is gonna add a little bit of verdigris. I'm gonna be using contrast paints and a little highlight to do this. And the color we're gonna be using is pterodon turquoise, first of all. So we take just a little bit of this pterodon turquoise on the tip of our brush. And we just pick these little studs in little various areas on the armor panels just add a little bit of kind of a green tinge. So I'm just going to add it around here on this one, like that. I'm going to add it on this one here as well. I'll add it there too, like that on the studs. On the shoulder pad, I'm going to add a little bit of it in here. Add it around that stud too. Put some in there. And we're going to add some of it just there as well. Put some around this stud here like that. Do some on that one on the face. Well, on the helmet. Put some in here. And some around there like that. Do a little bit on the back as well. Like that. And we can also do the same thing on the stab grot as well. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to take some gorse blaster green and we want to add a small kind of blob of it anywhere that we've added that tarot on turquoise. So for example, here on the stud, we're just going to add some of it in there like that. And the same again on there and there as well don't want this to be like a perfect highlight as it were it's just adding that kind of the pterodon turquoise adds the majority of it and then the gorse blaster green really kind of makes that verdigris effect come alive so with that done our killer boss with stab grot is now finished well they are now finished and they look absolutely 
stunning. So all that's left to do is to paint in their bases. Now I'm not gonna demonstrate how to paint the bases because we've already got a bunch of videos on how I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna be painting this Stormcast, this unfortunate Stormcast, in the same colors as the Hammers of Sigmar. So if you'd like to see how I'm gonna paint that, you can check out the How to Paint Hammers of Sigmar Vindictors tutorial available here on YouTube. Similarly for the rest of it, I'm gonna be doing the same thing for the Swamp bases, which you can find here on YouTube as well. But you of course can paint your bases any way you want. Of course, you can paint your Stormcast any way that you want. We've got a number of different tutorials. We've got Hallowed Knights, Celestial Vindicators, Astral Templars, Anvils of the Helden Hammer. Knights Excelsior. <laughs> All the main ones you could ask for. Tempest Lords as well. Here we have it then, our killer boss with Stabgrot is now complete and he looks absolutely fantastic, particularly with that finished off base with that poor Hammers of Sigmar Vindictor, I think it's a Vindictor, on his base. Let's all just take a moment silent to mourn the loss of a noble Stormcast. Okay, moment's over, because we've got a fully painted killer boss with Stabgrot. The Grot is fantastic, of course, as is the Pot Grot from this set. And this is a really simple, easy model, but it's very, very effective once it's finished. And I'm just very, very, very pleased with the final result. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further, like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.